dear students assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome to the course of history of english literature new classics to date this is uh, lecture number 19 and uh, in today's lecture we are going to start victorian age uh, of english literature and the topic of today's discussion is background to victorian age I am Muhammad Asif Khan lecturer department of English Kohat University of Science and Technology starting from the discussion agenda in this lecture first of all we will look at the history of uh, Victorian age after that we will study the journal characteristics of uh, Victorian age and uh, then we will see the detail of that age that uh, how this uh, long age is being divided into two sub ages the first one is early victorian period and the second is the later victorian period so starting our discussion from the history of uh, victorian age we see that uh, queen victoria she ascended the throne in 1837 and uh, she reigned between 1837 and uh, 1901 this is very long period and uh, we see that uh, that was uh, the time of prosperity and uh, the expansion of england so a very successful queen queen victoria her contribution on the political side also influenced the literature of that very time period but uh, we see that literary movements rarely coincide with the exact years of uh, a royal accession or the death and in the same way when we look at that uh, when the victorian period in literature officially started we see that uh, the date of uh, the official starting of uh, the literature of victorian period is uh, 1832 and uh, this is uh, the date uh, when tennyson's first volume of poems uh, which was named as poems appeared in 1832 so basically the romantic period uh, suddenly ended in 1820 and uh, that romantic period uh, which started uh, in 1798 with the publication of uh, lyrical ballads it continued till the year 1820 and we see that uh, these uh, were the heydays of uh, romanticism in england but uh, after that year of 1820 there was a sudden decline we see that Wordsworth, Coleridge and Scott produced nothing of importance after that date. On the other side, the second generation or the younger generation of uh, romantic poets, they unfortunately all of them died very young. So 1820 is the year when romantic period ended. And uh, between 1820 and 32 we see barren years of literature. in the years between 1820 and 1832 were surprisingly barren in the field of literature so that is uh, the the short history of uh, victorian age and uh, often we see that uh, critics uh, have given some other dates uh, of the beginning of uh, victorian age but uh, some of the dates which i have given to you like 1837 is the date of uh, a session of uh, queen victoria and 1832 or 33 is at the date from which we officially start the victorian period of literature so these are some dates and uh, dates are always very important uh, when we are studying history now let's uh, move uh, towards uh, the periods in victorian age as i told you earlier that uh, the reign of uh, queen victoria that continued from uh, 1837 up to in 1901 this is a period of 64 years and it was uh, basically a long period 
Uh, so we can say that uh, the Victorian age literature is uh, a very long uh, period and uh, it was also very complicated and we see that uh, many great writers flourished uh, in this time period and uh, there was a uh, diverse type of uh, literature coming in that period for that reason and for the sake of convenience we see that uh, critics uh, divide this very period into two sub periods the first one is called early victorian period and the second one is called later victorian period though there are uh, some distinctions uh, in both of these periods but fundamentally these two periods belong to one same era and one same age so the writers and uh, the other literary persons they belong to one group but for the sake of convenience we have divided them into two periods now we will look at uh, the characteristics of uh, victorian age basic uh, features uh, of uh, this very age are that uh, this is the age of uh, new type of democracy and uh, it is uh, uh, the age of uh, individualism and uh, every single person was uh, trying to seek out uh, the unique features uh, of uh, his personality and uh, there was uh, um, the development of egoism and uh, independence and distinctiveness in the characteristics of uh, the personality but the negative side of uh, this individualism was that uh, the people of uh, the age were super class conscious there was that uh, selfishness there and uh, we see that uh, they were just uh, trying to be very much uh, egoistic about uh, their own uh, feelings uh, and their own uh, material progress another important uh, and the crucial point uh, in uh, in the characteristics of uh, victorian age was that it is uh, the age of rapid industrial development and because of uh, this industrial development we see that there was uh, great uh, material expansion and one another name which has been given to this uh, time period is that uh, it is the age of progress here i would like to mention one another thing that uh, in this age uh, the people of uh, the victorian era were following the new conceptions uh, of the man basically these conceptions were formulated by the science and uh, the big influence uh, which was acting uh, on uh, that uh, science uh, was uh, the theory of evolution and uh, this uh, theory of evolution was first formulated in darwin's book the name of that book was uh, on the origin of uh, species that was published in 1859 in this book uh, and uh, if we overall look at the theory of evolution it states that uh, evolution is the process by which uh, organisms they change over time as a result of changes in the physical and behavioral traits so man was uh, the product of uh, evolution or the whole universe uh, is being now considered as uh, the product of uh, evolution and this uh, give rise to doubts and uh, because of this we see that victorian age is also named as age of doubt and because of that doubt we see that uh, overall there was pessimism that was uh, prevailing in that uh, age so it is also named as age of pessimism so these are some of the names now let's move uh, towards the general characteristics of the age and, uh, and these are that uh, most of uh, the people men and women who belong to that age were the men and women of marked originality they were trying to create new things so there was uh, the energy of creativity and uh, there was uh, a search of uh, novelty uniqueness and innovations 
so that originality was being followed in uh, the outlook or uh, we can also say that they were seeking originality in the attitudes point of view and in the stances which uh, they were taking at that time and uh, they were also trying to get originality in in their character personality and disposition and finally we can say that there was uh, that uh, newness and freshness in the in the style of uh, the people of victorian age so that was uh, the originality and uniqueness uh, that uh, the people of uh, that age were searching and the other thing was that uh, these very people or the or the men and women of victorian age were the critics of their own age and uh, they were having no sympathy with the spirit of that age so uh, we see a very controversial and uh, in this way a very pessimistic age that was uh, actually functioning against its own foundations so victorians were uh, searching and, uh, and they were trying to probe uh, and find out uh, the balance uh, in their society and also in all aspects of the life so there was uh, a great search for the stability and uh, the rational understanding in the middle of that fastly and swiftly changing time so most of uh, the literary geniuses uh, they favored the return toward the precision in form and uh, they were uh, favoring to return to the beauty but uh, that beauty was within the limits of the reason it was not uh, the pure search of uh, the beauty as uh, the romantics were doing it was different from them because uh, they were encircling that beauty with the limits of uh, the reason and in the end we see that uh, they were trying to return to the values of their society the principles and the standards or the moral and ethical grounds which their society was having so they were trying to return to those very values of their society and we see that uh, towards these values and uh, the precision in form had uh, already received the stamp of uh, universal approval so they were trying to go back uh, and uh, try to revisit uh, those very basic principles of their community dear students uh, another important uh, characteristic of uh, victorian age is that uh, they were insisting on the uh, rational and uh, balanced uh, element of thought which is uh, based uh, on the reason and uh, they were trying uh, to return to that very thing and that is one of uh, the typical unique characteristic of the victorian writers this quality in literature made them very close to akin to or similar to the great writers of new classical school who were dominant during 18th century and uh, we see that uh, there was a return towards the rules and regulation and the form being followed by the literary personalities of 18th century in this new age uh, there is uh, the birth and spread of noble political movements like uh, the movement of socialism and uh, liberalism and finally we see that there was uh, an organized uh, political movement of feminism in the victorian age that uh, resulted into overall change of mentality specifically the english society and uh, generally the mentality of uh, the whole european society now i would like to highlight uh, two or three other characteristics uh, that were very specific uh, to the writers uh, and uh, to the poets and the novelists of that very time period we see that uh, most of uh, 
uh, the great writers of the Victorian age, they were somehow motivated by some specific uh, moral purpose. It means that uh, they were uh, writing to accomplish or to fulfill some moral principles. For example, we see that Tennyson, Browning, Carl Lilly, Ruskin, Arnold, they wrote with uh, a very high level of uh, faith in their message and they were confident about that. They have the trust in that message which they were communicating to their audience. So that was one reason that they were writing. And the second, they were writing for some purpose and they were well aware of that purpose. It was not something like that. It was automatically happening. They were writing with purpose and they were well aware of uh, that very thing. And uh, they were consciously following that moral purpose. And they were doing this to uplift the society and to educate and instruct the society. So their writings were having a definite moral purpose. Even we see that uh, the novel, the tradition of the novel that uh, broke away from the Scots' romantic influence. The novels uh, which they created were very different from the romantic novels. Dickens, Thackeray, George Eliot, they wrote with very well-defined and uh, very explicit uh, purpose. And that was the purpose uh, to sweep away the errors and the faults that were there in the society. They tried to reveal the basic and underlying uh, fundamental truth of uh, the humanity. So they were very different writers and they were writing for the purpose. That was not uh, art for the sake of art. It was art for the sake of change in the society and they were trying to instruct uh, the people of that very time and they were trying to uplift uh, the moral and ethical grounds of uh, these people and, and they want them to be good, rightful, honest and decent uh, members of uh, the society. As I told you earlier that uh, Victorian literature is divided uh, for the sake of convenience and for the sake of some of uh, the characteristics of uh, the literary works, we divide uh, the literature into two subclasses and the first one is earlier Victorian period and uh, the dates are that this period started in 1832 and it continued up to 1870. This, uh, the earlier period was uh, the period of middle class supremacy and uh, we see that uh, uh, this period is uh, the period of free trade and the period of unrestricted competition in the society. The great writers uh, who were dominating uh, this very time period between 1832 and 1870, they were Tennyson, Alfred Lord Tennyson and he was uh, one of the leading Victorian poets in England and we see that his poetry is remarkable for for its uh, metrical variety, rich imagery and verbal melodies. In his poetry we see that uh, he dealt uh, with, the, with the doubts and difficulties uh, of that age in which we see that uh, traditional religious beliefs about uh, human nature and destiny were increasingly called into question and uh, why these very things were called into question that was because of uh, the science and the modern progress that was happening at that time. As I already told you that uh, the theory of evolution greatly influenced the science and uh, the other branches of uh, knowledge. So these were very much influenced and we see that Alfred Tennyson was also influenced uh, uh, with uh, these swift changes. The second person was uh, Browning. 
Robert Browning was a prolific uh, Victorian era poet and uh, he was also a playwright. He is widely recognized uh, as a, a master of uh, dramatic monologues and uh, the second thing is that uh, he presented uh, psychological portraits of human beings. So the third important personality he is uh, Matthew Arnold. He was an English uh, poet, literary and social critic and uh, he is uh, specially noted for his uh, classical attacks on the contemporary tastes and manners of the aristocracy and uh, the commercial middle class. After Matthew Arnold we have Carlyle. Thomas Carlyle was uh, another important uh, personality. He was a British uh, historian and uh, a satirical writer, essayist, translator, philosopher, mathematician and uh, teacher. He did a uh, wonderful job in all these fields of uh, knowledge and uh, he is followed by John Ruskin. John Ruskin was uh, the leading art critic of Victorian era and uh, his writing style and uh, literary forms uh, were equally varied and a uh, variety of writing styles and forms uh, he used in his writings. He wrote essays, treaties, poetry, delivered lectures and he also wrote uh, travel guides, manuals, letters, very prolific writer, very prolific writer. Even we have uh, fairy tales from him. So he produced literature in so many fields that uh, today we are astonished at how he did that. After that we see Charles Dickens. He was a very famous person even in his life uh, and uh, even today we are uh, reading his uh, novels. We see that uh, he is a great English writer and social critic and he created some of the world's best known fictional characters and he is regarded as uh, the greatest uh, novelist of uh, the Victorian age. The last person which I listed in uh, the earlier Victorian period is uh, Thackeray. He was uh, Indian born English novelist and uh, along with the novels he also wrote many other things he was illustrator or basically he was uh, known for his uh, satirical works now let's uh, move uh, towards the later victorian period that period started in 1870 and continued up to 1901 that is uh, the year of the death of uh, queen victoria the prominent writers after 1870 were rossetti Swinburne, Morris, George Eliot, Meredith, Hardy, Newman and Petter. They seem to belong to different age but uh, as I told you that uh, even though they were having uh, some different characteristics from the writers of the earlier uh, Victorian age but actually they belong to the same age. Now we will look at some of uh, the distinct characteristics as we see that uh, uh, in poetry Rossetti, Swinburne and Morris they were the protagonists of uh, pre-Raphaelite movement and uh, that is very important movement uh, in uh, the English literature. This very movement was followed by aesthetic movement which is having uh, the slogan of art for the sake of art. So these three writers uh, Rossetti, Swinburne and Morris they started pre-Raphaelite movement and uh, in the field of novel we see that George Eliot is the pioneer of uh, modern psychological novel and Meredith and Hardy followed uh, the pattern laid down by George Eliot. In prose we see that Newman he tried to revolutionize uh, Victorian thought and uh, he was trying uh, this uh, by turning uh, the Victorian thoughts back to Catholicism. And we see another important name in the prose. He is uh, Pater, came out uh, with purely static doctrine of art for the sake of art. So these uh, patterns were directly opposite uh, to the fundamentally moral approach of uh, the prose writers 
of the earlier period. The prose writers of the earlier Victorian period, they were writing with some moral purposes. Here we see that uh, either Newman is writing uh, with the religious purpose and uh, Pater is writing with purely aesthetic uh, doctrines. So these are some of the characteristics of uh, later Victorian uh, period uh, writers, poets, novelists uh, and uh, the prose writers. So in this lecture we studied uh, the history of Victorian age that was followed by the journal characteristics of the Victorian age and then we specifically evaluated the early Victorian period and the later Victorian period. So that is all for today's discussion. Thank you very much for listening passionately. I hope that uh, now you will be having uh, sufficient background to the Victorian age. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz.